Today's episode of Filmmaker U is brought to you by our sponsors, OWC. Go to owcdigital.com for all your filmmaking and computer needs. And it's also brought to you by our other sponsors, AJA. Make sure to check out AJA.com so that you can see how they can help you in your post-production needs. Hi, I'm Gordon Burkell from Filmmaker U. At Filmmaker U, we create courses for film professionals to deepen and diversify your existing skill set. You can uh, learn more at filmmakeru.com or join us on Twitter at filmmaker underscore you. This week, I'm joined by cinematographer Tom Houghton, uh, whose work includes American Horror Story, They Came Together, Rescue Me, 30 Rock, and many, many, many more great shows and films. Welcome to the show, Tom. Morning. Um, I guess my, my first question is, you spent several years on the show Rescue Me. Uh, how right. did you involved with that show? Uh, I knew the uh, producers and they, <clears throat> they, I was aware of it. They had done a pilot and they wanted to uh, integrate uh, me into it from actually the second episode on. Mm -hmm. So it was, uh, uh, you know, in integrating and, and uh, going forward for the, actually turned out to be a seven year run of episodes. Wow. Um, so when you were taking over a show, because someone else uh, started it, um, how much involvement did you have in creating the look for the show? Because usually the pilot is where they're figuring things out. Um, but it sounds like you right. just after that. Well, Jonathan Freeman uh, did the pilot a uh, number of months before they got picked up for episodes. So I, and he did actually the first two episodes of the series and I was around, I <clears throat> operated those two episodes. So I was around to see what was going on and how the, I, I knew the crew. Mm -hmm. So it was a pretty simple segue into the episodes that I was doing. Uh, and it's, it wasn't a radical, you know, you're not there to ch change gears. You're just there to fit in and make it, make it work. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what I did. Uh, you, you may, and every season you kind of learn things that you can streamline, meaning in the sets, you may build things, have time to build things and have more money to invest in construction things, uh, make things wild, certain walls on the sets that could be made more movable, uh, just more, create some more efficiencies in the, in the uh, physical nature of the show. So we tried to do that every, something every season. Now you you also worked on the the feature film they came together uh, right now that crew of comedians or uh, actors are pretty well known for like ad libbing and sort of coming up with stuff on the spot um, did that pose any challenges for you as the cinematographer in, in terms of coverage and getting everything for post they would uh, it's a great cast of people who work together they're friends and they go way back to uh, <clears throat> Wet Hot American Summer and uh, mm. David Wayne and Michael Showalter and Paul Rudd and Amy Poehler and everybody. So they would lock it by by the through the rehearsal process. Mm. Things were pretty well figured out, so it didn't take a lot to photograph it. Mm. And there are no no real radical surprises. Uh, you know if it. If you're doing a film, you know, like uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm, I understand is really working from an outline. Mm -hmm. And then each actor contributes their, their story. They embellish their, their part. Uh, it, that sort of becomes a documentary. So yeah. you just make sure you're covering people <laughs> when you're talking. But as far as they came together, it was, mainly working out some of the moves and stuff and making sure you had coverage or you picked up the coverage uh, by the time you're finished with the, the scene. Interesting. So you, you've, uh, you've worked with all these, these different shows uh, and different movies. What would you say are some of the challenges um, in television that you might not see in a future film? Uh, there's a greater concern about time and money, I guess, schedule, schedule and money. Uh, your page count is greater. 
uh, generally. Mm -hmm. uh, although they came together, also had a tight, pay, you know, ambitious page count because it was a, a lower budget uh, tier movie. So they worked quickly and uh, efficiently. Uh, so that's the, that's the big difference you see if you notice the schedules for a major motion picture are quite are longer. So you may you may spend just the whole morning <clears throat> blocking and uh, not, not make your first shot until after lunch. But yeah. that wouldn't happen on a on an episodic show. Now you've uh, you know colorists have become a very important part of working with the cinematographer. How do you like to work with colorists to get the look of a show or a, a movie? Uh, you're right. The colorist, I mean, we used to work with a, a colorist or timer at the lab hmm. uh, for dailies and for the print, the answer print and the release print that's evolved to where the colorist at the post house and there are many uh, you work with and the colorist for dailies is one person you work with who may see your footage before you do and uh, that's an important person to be on the same page as you are and then there's the uh, the once the show is cut you want to what, what i do is go through a show and make notes really about what uh, what i want to have adjusted and what i don't want to have adjusted because sometimes they may think they're fixing something which is not which is uh, not what you want. You may want it to be as as you shot it. Uh, other things you may want some help on. So it's a, a good measure to, to uh, uh, communicate. Now I, I let the colors maybe work. It depends on the schedule for for a day or two on the show, and then go in and sit and with the director maybe uh, and go through it reel by reel mm -hmm. uh, and see how it plays. Because they, you know, they're a creative input, and they have ideas, and you want to give them some room to do their do their do their thing. Interesting. So, is, um, you know, you talked about coming from the old days with the telecines and the color passes. Um, you know, is there is there something that you miss from working on film, or is it just so much easier now, going digital? <laughs> Right, it's not easier, but uh, less less worry, I guess. Well, there are just more options and more tools, mm -hmm. which can help you, but they can also get a lot more. Uh, uh, they can get a lot more people involved, which can sometimes gum up the works. So it's it's hopefully you're all on the same page in uh, how you're executing the show, and uh, I think it's just important to. Uh, be clearly determined who's uh, they're going to keep you on board and let you work on the look of the show. Uh, I mean, making prints and answer prints on mm -hmm. film. I mean, that was even before you. Uh, that earlier on, the telecine would only be involved when the release print is done. Mm -hmm. So there'd be no no scanning, no nothing until you had a print, a release print. Really, you work from a uh, IP, IP or an internegative. So really the look has been uh, created on film, completely on film. Uh, so now it's, there's many, there's the, it's scanned and all, all sorts of other steps. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I think what I like about uh, the new methods you can isolate certain parts of the frame and create and darken them or light them. Mm -hmm. And you can write, <clears throat> if you're doing a pan from a overexposed part of the frame to an underexposed part, you can write it, change the exposure uh, in, 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 the, in the video suite, in the color suite that you uh, and do it very accurately. So mm -hmm. things that you would do on set, you do, would rather do on, in the room. So that's a, that's a great tool. Wow. 
Now, how do you like to, like, how do you work to get on the same page as the director to come up with a look for a, a film or a TV show? Well, you reference other films, other paintings, other directors. Uh, it's, some have lots of ideas, others don't, mm -hmm. others. Uh, in television episodic, the look has pretty much been established by the, the continuity of the show. So the directors mm -hmm. are there to work with the actors and tell the story. So yes. they rarely <clears throat> make a radical change in the look of the show. Uh, hopefully, I mean, they, they're not there to change it, change it a lot. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, uh, they'll get, they'll get input from the executives if they're, if they do that, I think. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. Cause it's the, the audience is used to a certain mm -hmm. method of, of the grammar of the show has been set up the punctuation, the way the, the scenes are covered. Yeah. Uh, so they, they, uh, they, they sort of jump on for two weeks and jump off yeah. and another director comes in to do their, their, their episode. So what would you say, like, is there, cause you've worked on some amazing stuff. So is there a scene or, um, a particular um, scene or shot from a film that you're really, or a television show that you're particularly proud of? Well, American Horror Story was great to work on because it was very uh, operatic, mm -hmm. big uh, yeah. uh, show. It was, I did season three, uh, some episodes in mm -hmm. New Orleans and <clears throat> we had a two story set for the mansion and the cast was great. When you have Kathy Bates and, and Jessica Lange mm -hmm. uh, at the top of the list, plus all the other cast, it's just great to work with. And the uh, we were shooting on film also, which created its own look. And we used a lot of wide lenses, which meant you lit differently than you would if you were losing, using normal lenses. Uh, and we used, we had some visual effects and we, if the director, and, and we had some special effects as, as well. So everything was, a, <clears throat> everything was a challenge and we, we shot it that way. So some shots would take a little bit of fiddling on, on set to make it work, but it paid off. And we did some, uh, amazing, amazing things on that on that show so i think all in all as far as a, a, a number of you know amazing shots it was that show uh and it was a, sort of the motif of the show to just have stunning visual mm -hmm. shots and uh, you know you're shooting actors with wide lenses which is something you wouldn't always do but on the show you did yeah if you know the american horror story when i watched it there's also a lot of like dark scenes and dark moments. So how do you approach lighting a scene like that to make sure that you give the audience the sense of darkness, but they're not having to adjust their TV to, right. <laughs> to see it? Well, you show dark by showing light. So if you have some something to contrast with, uh, something in the frame mm -hmm. or the next frame is lighter and you cut to something that's darker, candlelit or a lantern or scary, some part of the frame should have some lighter value to it because if it's just dark mm -hmm. it doesn't really work you you've lost your your audience and it looks muddy so mm -hmm. i mean there is there is a general complaint some people light stuff too dark mm -hmm. and uh, it it's they can't see it and that's that's a problem i mean our our sort of standard uh, 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 person is uh, Gordon Willis and his work on The Godfather and his films. Mm -hmm. So they were dark, but they showed, told a story and uh, told a great story. And and uh, we understood how dark they could be. Yeah. So it worked. Is there, who who is that cinematographer that you look for to, for inspiration? Is it Gordon Willis or is it others? Or Well, 
his the godfathers conrad hall is another mm -hmm. director of photography that i think many dps admire and uh you know look look up to and study his work uh so he just he just broke the, down some barriers tried things and uh did did some amazing storytelling uh, uh, in cold blood was on our classics last night oh, yeah. and it was just some great black and white photography unfortunately i think black and white photography had been eliminated from the academy awards that year so we didn't couldn't be a contender uh in a black and white category well and it's got that great shot of the rain going over the guy's face yeah he talks about that in some yeah. of the documentaries yeah it yeah and because like black and white when i look at it like well lit black and white is phenomenal to just yeah see. like the text there's a texture in there almost um when you when you do that uh is there a way of translating that to color then like taking that yeah like creating con contrast and uh don't be afraid of shadows mm -hmm. and and it's it's uh the tendency often is to just make soft light yeah. do your job which is one way to work which was a a style of the 60s somewhat and but if you revert to hard light i mean searching for bobby fisher which connie shot had hard light and shadows yeah and uh road to perdition had shadows in it so i think if you're judicious uh you can make hard light tell your story yeah no um i have one last question that i like to ask everyone i interview we've been stuck in this pandemic for so long is there a um show or a movie you've discovered uh on the streaming networks that people should check out well it's funny because i i really just fall back to turner classics and see what they're showing uh, the the film noir film they show yes uh, saturday night always comes up with something that i may, might be a new film or i like the introductions because they tell you something about the background story mm -hmm. so it was a <clears throat> the 40s and 50, 50s were a fertile period for uh it's kind of low budget b movies that they were making and they didn't have a you know they had 10 days to make a movie and they made some very good uh gritty generally black and white movies with so up and coming stars or up they had some superior dps mm -hmm. uh john alton and others shooting these movies so it was uh it's a good resource to go back and look at see how they they told stories in a simplistic simple manner they didn't overdo coverage because they didn't have time for it and yeah. uh they told their story was there is there a particular um film noir that you like well uh john alton for example who i met before uh in the 90s uh was great in the, he was in his 90s uh yeah he shot team in uh and uh raw deal mm -hmm. uh which were really basic gangster movies or crime movies and they did them in 10 days wow. so and he used a lot of shadow how do you get through a film in 10 days that seems like i hear about 20 to 30 day shoots being tight no because like a tv show we shoot yeah for eight days we shoot 50 minutes of material oh, so you true. if you don't do as much coverage and you are disciplined you can you can do it wow. it's it, you have to back into that schedule be, yeah. be judicious and you can block things and tell stories and maybe do voiceover or title here and there so there are ways to economize and i'm sure a lot of first-time filmmakers could help tell a story with those tools mm -hmm. rather than insist on so many a variety of shots or a variety of locations which will sink their show yeah so get uh just be as precise as you can and not uh just feel you can't get every location uh yeah. in, in your show make the make the ones you use better 
well, thank you so much for letting me interview you today. Oh, yeah. And uh, that's it for this week. Uh, make sure to check out filmmakeru.com for all our latest courses. And of course, follow us on Twitter at filmmaker underscore you. Today's episode of Filmmaker U is brought to you by our sponsors, OWC. Go to owcdigital.com for all your filmmaking and computer needs. And it's also brought to you by our other sponsors, AJA. Make sure to check out AJA.com so that you can see how they can help you in your post-production needs.